recording. So let me make sure that we are here before I start rambling all up on you guys. Just making sure we're here. Oh, there I am. Okay. All right. Our last week. And yes, I'm standing because the last week of our Earth in Five Dimensions workshop is where we really need to get serious about um, our mindset. And right now, it's all about the solar plexus. It's all about getting that strong sense of demonstrating who we are inside all the work that we've done over the years, you guys. All of the reading and the certifying and the mapping out and the studying and the meditating and the grounding and the crystals and the coaches and the coaching and the you know energy work that we've had and received and given and where is all that like where is that in coherence to your lifestyle because in 5d is when you begin to have the lifestyle that you have always wanted okay it's almost like your dreams and your hopes they move from the imagination space of the fourth dimension where it's been lovingly held in escrow for you. And it begins to materialize and not materialize in a bittersweet space like it has in the past where 10 steps forward, 10 steps back, job that you love, coworker from hell, right? It's, it's a place where things start to materialize and you don't freak out when you start getting what you want because you know i teach a lot in my academy that sometimes you don't know where your shadows are until you start manifesting your dreams you know because think about it when we're working to desire 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 we haven't actually received anything and when we haven't received anything then we can keep that momentum of desire going and therefore we don't actually deal with the shadow of receiving of what it feels like to be seen and heard what it feels like to be loved and told that we're loved, to move away from codependency into co-creation. So once we kind of get there, there's a whole bunch of new shadows that we have to work out. It's like you finally get the money and then you're like, what do I know to do with this? Or you finally get the relationship and you don't believe them when they tell you they love you, or you don't know how to deal with their attention and their integrity and their authentic space, you know, taking up your space. So it's almost like that's when you start to freeze, when you start to get what you want right so obviously there's more work to be done and that's why we have this bridge of the fourth dimension that helps us move from a third dimensional slavery program into us reconditioning our minds reconditioning our bodies upgrading taking those downloads receiving them working with them in the time and space that it allows us to and then moving into the next leveling up phase and the next leveling up phase is all about hitting against your old programs, right? So if you've taken any of my classes or studied under me, I always say when you guys level up, you're gonna hit an echo of the past. It's almost like, you know, you're on this bridge and there's a big crocodile sitting there. But if you've ever played a video game, you know that each sequence of the video game gets more intense as you rise above it, which means there's more obstacles, there's more challenges, but there's also more opportunity because you're being faster, more confident, more courageous, you know yourself more, you're moving into self-love. So. I'm getting ready to launch a great big workshop in my community um, called Vision Quest. And you know, 2020 is the year of perfect vision, right? But in order for us to move back to perfect vision, we have to have the truth exposed. We have to see what's really going on on this planet. We have to feel what's going on on this planet, which means that we're gonna have to feel things that we've never felt before. We're gonna have to feel the anger and the rage of being lied to. We're gonna have to go into the shame programs and the guilt from where we have been judgmental or racist or whatever you want to put in the metaphor of that conditioning that we were literally taught to be and do so when we move out of that we start to elevate and lift up those emotions out of our body now when you let go of emotional density density you lighten up right that's enlightenment and we're all talking about when are we going to get our light bodies when are we going to start you know moving things with our mind when are we going to start you know resurrecting this planet back to Atlantean quality. Like, when is that happening? Well, that happens when that happens within because the 5D experience is a state of being. It's not a location, it's not a space. It actually happens in your interior universe. So our deepest journey right now is to get deep into the body and recondition, reboot, reorganize, right? Rename, 
repurpose, right? Regenerate our bodies, our cellular memory, our muscle memory, our subatomic memory, our unconsciousness, our subconsciousness. So that's a lot of work to do, right? That's like going into space and like trying to clean, clean out the garage, right? So that's what we're doing. It's because there's an entire universe inside of you and it is the number one thing that has been neglected on the planet, which is why we create so much destruction outside of ourselves. We create so much destruction outside of ourselves because we don't know who we are. Now, we are taught to not know who we are. We are taught to give away our, our free thinking, our free dreaming, our free crying, our free feeling, right? And to get into a much more structured realistic, logical, linear perspective of reality. Get your head out of the clouds and focus, right? And none of us are good at focusing because we all technically have ADD, which is attention, multi-dimensional multi attention units, right? So we are multi-dimensional in a fractal consciousness. We are also by nature born to repel authority. Like it's within our blood it's within our bones to repel authority so that's why we're really right here right now as a collective moving into the fifth dimension the last week of our workshop the earth in five dimensions is all about standing up it's all about standing up and taking our power back but not in a destructive way right it's not in a way where we're going to go light towns on fire and you know put out of work hard working people who put their nest egg into the small business we're not tearing that down that's ridiculous. That's an excuse to demonstrate pain. We've got to demonstrate our pain differently. We've got to receive it. We've got to receive it with self-love. We've got to see. We've got to see it. Receive it by taking care of ourselves. We've got to see it by using our telepathic qualities of the heart and getting out of the head. Because one thing that I want you guys to understand is that if you have pain in your body, or if your body is full, or your body is too small or your body is weak, or your body is tired, your mind is working against you. I really need you to hear me right now. If you're in pain, or if your body is out of alignment anywhere, your mind is working against you, okay? Now, if you're feeling good, feeling, uh, feeling get, getting out of bed, you know, working on your dreams, you know, getting your body wiggling and moving and eating well, you're working with your body, right? That's like a relationship, like, we're working together to raise this child, right? Working together. Now, when the mind starts working for you, you have entered five dimensions. You have entered the dimension where the mind is now its faithful servant of you and knows who you are and what you are and what you want. It's almost like having a personal assistant that knows your favorite flowers, your favorite foods, your favorite things. So it lines it up ahead of you so that you can walk into it and choose who you want to be and experience in that moment versus trying to create those things and trying to convince people to show up how you want them to show up so that they'll be the person that you want to experience with. And then guess what happens from that perspective? All expectations are literally like stabs in the heart, right? You feel let down, then you go into judgment, then you go into self-loathing, and now you're 10 steps back, right? So, when the mind is working against you, you are technically in the third dimension, which means mind, ego, whatever you want to call it, is working against you. That's where your sabotaging abilities are, your um, behavior that is not up to par, having to use willpower to eat well, okay? Having to rely on coaches, mentors, and all these people for your personal well being. Like if you can't feel good without it, something outside of you, if you cannot have that happiness for no reason quality that's the mind working against you okay now when the mind starts working with you this is when the momentum really starts to pick up and you start to edge out all of everybody else's programs you start to get your eyes on your own paper because your life actually becomes the most exciting life in front of you right your confidence is rising you're speaking your truth to yourself guys this is what is so important right now on the planet I know you're feeling a feeling and it makes you want to go out and put something on Facebook or start a campaign or go protest. But if you haven't resolved the conflict within yourself, it will actually be destructive. Acting out that behavior will become destructive. And unfortunately, guys, and I don't make the rules here, 
you will accumulate karmic for that behavior. If I'm upset about something and then I go post, I want everybody to be upset about this because this is an injustice, okay? Now what I'm doing is I'm triggering a bunch of people who may not be ready to see what I just put out. I might be triggering the masses. Now you're saying, but yes, triggers are a shortcut. Yes, if I am ready to deal with the energy in front of me, if I am just waking up, and I'm trying to figure out how to sleep well or not eat sugar during the day. And all of a sudden you guys are putting out some crazy thing that's making me feel completely overwhelmed, insecure, and makes me feel like I just want to give up because there's nothing that I can do personally because my self-esteem is too low. That's 90% of our collective guys. And if you're listening to this workshop, you're probably in a leadership position somewhere in your life. You're the smartest person you know. You know, you have studied through it all. You know, you, you pretty much know how this game works by now. And the last thing that you do need to do is from a PhD position, go to a kindergartner and scare the heck out of them about what real life is, right? That's not our job. Our job is to stand in our personal power and really communicate to ourselves what we're upset about. You know, where is the injustice in our families, in our lineage, in our genders? right? Because it's not just black or white. It's a, there's a bunch of gender pain going on too. I mean, women have been repressed in, in the world for, you know, thousands of years, right? So it's like, we have things to be upset about. And that is okay. Because really, in order to get to the fifth dimension, which is a state of being, guys, that looks completely different than what it looks like here. You've got to purge that out. So purging is a good thing but I'm not gonna take it out of me and then slap it on someone else because then I'm going to produce karma around it and I'm gonna be responsible for that, which means I'm gonna to have to loop back around, take amends processing and take responsibility for that somewhere in my life when I could have been just running forward if I had just had my eyes on my own paper. So what I wanna do is I wanna get my anger and I wanna bring it up and I wanna say, that outside of me really pissed me off, excuse my language. Now, where is that inside of me? I can't find it. I would never do those things. I guarantee you, if you look below the subconscious and you dive into the unconscious, the unconscious is a numbing space. So it's not going to feel like your subconscious emotions. It's not gonna feel like anger. It's gonna feel like numbness. It's gonna feel like lack of motivation. It's gonna feel like procrastination. It's gonna feel like you don't have an opinion. It's gonna feel like you don't care. It's also gonna maybe feel like grief because after you get to a deeper level, you understand that grief is just hiding underneath anger and anger is grief's bodyguard. And what is grief, guys? It's homeless love. Grief is homeless love. It is, it is love with nowhere to go. It is with no home. That's why we take grief outside of us and inside of us and we bury it so deep that we don't know where it is and we don't ever want to find it because the pain hurts so much but if you're about to take my new workshop you're going to learn a completely different relationship with pain because pain has been your greatest teacher your greatest motivator your greatest influencer your greatest challenger it has grown you the most on your journey now earth is set in two two exact games Two different games on earth are being played. One where your teacher is pain and one where your teacher is love. Third dimensional teacher is pain, resistance, okay? You move over, you realize I don't have to suffer. It's been a choice this whole time, but all that pain in my body had to come out and be acted out through my reflective universe. So therefore, now my new teacher will be love, right? But you've got to graduate. So fifth dimension is a graduation process that you now move into more opportunities. It's like being in elementary school versus being in high school, right? High school, college, you get to drive a car, you get to live where you wanna live, you get to buy what you wanna live, you're still in school, but it's way cooler and the parties are way more fun and everybody else is having a great time, right? Versus elementary school where it's your gawky stage, you never really get what you want, you gotta go to school, blah, blah, blah. That's what that feels like. But we get stuck on things that we're in resistance to. We also get stuck in our buried old emotions. So during the vision quest that I'm about to take my group on is we are gonna go into pain and we're gonna develop a new relationship with it. Because when you were a child, pain meant you were in trouble. 
It means something bad was happening. It meant that you were being punished, right? But pain in non-duality is a pusher. It's a scraper. It's a nudger. How many of you guys have had cupping done on your back or bone scraping or fascia work or lifting weights? It was all worth it, wasn't it? Because you understand that that pain is digging up all of that unprocessed, numb emotion that has been below the surface. And that's what's happening right now as a collective, that we are feeling pain to scrape and scrape and pull up roots. So where can you be doing this in your own reality? Just checking time. I don't want to go over because I got to give you guys an activation today. Um, where can you be doing this in your own reality? Where can you be looking where you are avoiding pain and discomfort? Where can you repurpose it? Because you can't avoid it for long. It's going to be the very thing that keeps you on the shore while everybody else is sailing on the boat, the, cr the party cruise, right? Where now they're creating new money. They're, uh, they're creating new, you know, government, creating new communities, new foods that are growing effortlessly in everybody's yard. Like, it's so cool, right? We all want this. So what do we need to do to get into that unconscious place where we are avoiding pain, okay? The pain outside of you is triggering what's loaded inside of you. So you cannot possibly be triggered if the gun's not loaded. So if you're being tr triggered, then where are you lower? Is loaded, right? I can probably promise you doing this work for the last 15 years that it's in the, the lower three chakras, right? Root, what is root? Survival, it's money, it's childhood, it's, it's not fair, it's why does she get to have what she wants? But on the other side, in 5D, the root represents unity, collective, co-creation, sharing, right? Abundance, freedom, okay? Sacral chakra in the third dimension. It means I'm starving. My creativity is being starving. My sexuality has been suppressed and has created me to feel disgusted by it. It is I am starving. Now on the other side of five dimension, right? The sacral is saying I am fed. I am creative. I am imaginative. I am creator. And solar plexus, right, is I demonstrate. And in the third dimension, I demonstrate what I'm hiding inside. I demonstrate what I'm avoiding. I demonstrate my addictions. I demonstrate judgment. I demonstrate uh, comparison. And in the fifth dimension, I demonstrate love, peace, kindness, joy, creativity, generosity, helpfulness, service, blah, blah, blah. So you can kind of see that you are angels and demons all in one source. And if you don't tame and heal and integrate the dark side of you, then you will consecutively be a lifelong bridger, right? So let me ask you guys, you probably know someone by now who's been on their spiritual journey for, I don't know, 20, 30 years, maybe way, way back in the Edward Casey days, even before that, you know, maybe it was into quantum physics as a kid and they're still on the bridge. And you're like, why are you not enlightened times 10 times right now? How come you are not like in your light body, like thriving? You know, why are you still surviving? Because what happens is we can have access to all of this beautiful knowledge, guys. We can have the best gurus and teachers on the planet. We can pay for the greatest certifications. But if we don't dig down inside of ourselves and uproot the chaos and the destruction and the pain and the grief and bring it into our focal point, our feeling space, our heart center, and purify it with our own energy, right? Then it remains collectively dormant and you stay in a safe space and use academia, study of the spiritual journey, as your security blanket to feel good. But really, I'm going to tell you, for the past two years, I have not had a spiritual journey. I have had a body journey. And the more that I learn about what the capabilities of my body is and are, I start to understand the cosmos a lot better. Because understanding just the cosmos 
and understanding the different dimensions and understanding the different star systems and the different light bodies and the different energies and the different fractals and the different portholes and the different vortexes that exist around us is really about the untapped ocean within you, right? It's about the depths of the abyss. It's where nobody knows where it is. That is your engine of manifestation that's gonna get you to 5D not to mention into six dimension, where you will be able to then embody that superhero, that the superhero archetype within yourself, where your body will begin to move things with its mind and, and sh show up. But for now, we have a telepathic heart. Now, some of you guys speak light language, some of you have heard light language, and some of you have no idea what it is, that's cool, but for me, when my light language came in a couple of years ago, I was really processing deep pain of emotional abandonment with the mas divine masculine. My daddy left, failed marriages, blah, blah, blah. You know, this is my violin sob story. But the truth of it was, is I had so much buried pain um, in regards to my divine masculine. The right side of my body was in chronic pain. I had fibromyalgia, blah, blah, blah. Eating disorder. These are all the things that manifested my mind working against me. And when I really started to pull out that pain, my light language came out with it. Now, light language is a telepathic communication that is soul-based language, okay? It's not woo-woo, it's ancient. It's older than the universe itself because it is the word of creation. Now, it comes from different places within us, our, 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 um, Chakras have their own light language, right? Our souls have their own light language. Our guides have their own light language. Different star systems have their own language, just like there's a billion different languages out there in the world for us to choose from. The thing I like about light language is when I'm doing an activation or a healing, I get an opportunity to bypass all of the words that trigger your mind, okay? Because in regards to your everyday reality, there are words that have been used against you in your life that have been painful, that have been unrequited love, have been hurtful, but they're disguised as powerful words, like the word love, right? For most of it, it's integrated in pain somewhere. The word God, where the hell has he been, right? You know, the word hope, right? The word faith, you know, all these words that are tied with unresolved pain within us keep us very captive in hearing and receiving help and guidance. So if I start saying, oh, you are loved and the and universe loves you, you're like, wah, 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 really, right? But if I connect with you through your heart, your ego looks at me like I'm nuts, which is fine, and can't understand a word that I'm saying, it's going to find something else to think about or do, even if it's judge me, during my light language activation, where I am connecting soul to soul, heart to heart, through a true telepathic space of me reminding you and unlocking certain codes within you to help you accelerate into you letting go of the unconscious garbage that you no longer need to be responsible for. You showing up on the planet was your gift to humanity. So now it's time for you to give a bigger gift and let go of the baggage of the body. Let go of the baggage of the collective. Let go of the baggage of the third dimension and lighten up so that your momentum and your energy and your motor can start really moving you into, into the fifth dimension where the party is really starting, guys. Okay, so what I would like for y'all to do if you're watching this live is if you're not in a private space, go back and listen. It's probably the last eight minutes of this recording and just sit with yourself. I prefer to stand when I receive downloads um, because it really reminds me to hold my core in place and receive all of it and make sure that my energy has been moving all along because, you know, we're on a phone like this all day. So it's important that you are receiving your energy. When your shoulders are back, you're receiving. When your shoulders are in, you're hoarding energy, guys. So you want to kind of hold your shoulders back and put your hand, one on your, your tummy, and put it on the place of you that you're the most, um, most self-conscious of. 
right? So if you've got a little bloating action right below the heart, if you've got some bloating action below the, the belly button, put your hand there. Put the other hand, I don't care which one, hand on your heart, okay? So this is, you know, this is all about the I am. This is about I am. I am here. I am this. I am creator. I am this body. And even that is major trigger words to your ego. So I'm going to shut up so that I stop triggering your ego. And with me, whenever, and you can go back to the, and do this as many times as you want, because this recording will stay on um, in Paul's group. Right? So hand on your, on your heart, other hand on your solar plexus, on your root, your sacral, whichever one feels like it needs more love, more connection. And I want you to just take five breaths with me and bring spirit into the body. And then I just want you to let go. I want you to go into a space of surrender. I, you don't have to listen to me. You don't have to be present with me. I would prefer it if you close your eyes because then you'll be more in your interior universe than focused and distracted by your external universe. You know, it's always better if, when you're listening to light language if you have earphones on because it will breathe with your brain and travel from the left and right hemisphere and move into the zero point energy and tickle your pineal gland, right? So if you have headphones, go ahead and listen to them now. Otherwise, you can go back and listen to this as many times as you want. And this is my gift, higher self's gift to you as your five, your fifth dimensional earth activation to allow the decoding and the DNA to open, elevate, and expand, move you into that crystalline energy grid and move anything that you no longer want or no longer serves you out of the way so your awareness can increase, your consciousness can increase, and your heart can open fully. All right, so let's all take five breaths. Gotta <laughs> Kai <laughs> Ko 
Tarkotishku onga to kuku la turpo tarako kar ua te sera wara versa tata kara kara ua tarihi. Koko ndegi latte kora tushko tarako tarake visi. Tarishka? Tushko tarake tiki kare kare sahi a kara ua shaita kare i kate shikuru. Tarsanzuku tarakish kadara sarasi shwaye teki. Sekratushe teke bre. Surinda karate shi. Take a breath. Tarukute pace kara dirikata. 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 Take a breath. Take a breath. Take another breath. Set an intention, what you would prefer to let go of. What are you done with? What are you ready to surrender? What are you ready to step into? What are you ready to allow? What are you ready to become? All right, I'm going to ask every one of you to drink a whole bunch of water today um, that will help us move and integrate our activations. If you can be exposed to sunlight, I highly re recommend it. Do some stargazing tonight. You'll be surprised what you see. And in the morning, wake up with the sun and watch the sun rise and the activation will be complete. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to take you on this journey into the Earth and Five Dimensions workshop. Thank you to the Positive Life Club group and all of you guys on Facebook for participating. Um, I will see you guys on the flip side on my new workshop, Vision Quest, or if you want to get strong with me, Quantum Physics, where I will be getting you guys metaphysically fit and saying goodbye to your eating disorders and your addiction to unhappy, unhealthy behavior. All right, guys, I will see you soon. Thank you so much for this opportunity.